Welcome back, everybody. Uh, in today's video, we're going to continue our discussion on the Python com library. And in particular, we're going to be talking about a particular object that exists in that library, the running table object. So the running table object is basically a nice little mechanism, if you want to call it such, that we can get all the running com objects that are currently on our workstation. So what do I mean by com objects? Well, for example, you see down here that I have Adobe Audition uh, operating, I can actually get information related to that application using this object. And I'm going to show some examples. So for example, I'm going to just open up Visual Studios 2019. And we'll see in this example that I can actually get some information about these applications simply from this running, uh, what is it, the running object table. So to work with it, it's very straightforward. The first thing you're going to do is you're gonna import your library very straightforward and we're going to import python com alrighty <clears throat> and then from here we need to define a couple things uh, one of them I will explain later as to uh, what exactly it is but at this point I'm just going to define it and I'm not really going to discuss it the first one is going to be our uh, create binding context and so we're going to create a new variable called context we're going to call our python com module and then we're going to call the create bind context method and then we're going to pass through zero this method only uh, can pass you can only pass through zero in this method for it to work so I'm going to put a note here must be zero and we'll see why this is important later but at this point we just want to define it and then what we're going to do is we're going to get our running object table so the way we get that is we're going to call our python com module and then we're going to call the get running object table method and so we're going to say get uh, running object table and then I'm gonna store that in a variable and we'll call it running comms just for something easy to remember call our Python com module and then we're gonna call the get running object table method and this is gonna return back an object this will return back an object that we can work with um, what we can do next uh, is there's different ways you can approach it, but I found this way was kind of the most uh, logical, at least the way I thought about it. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create an enumerator that has all the running objects that we currently have open, and we're going to use that by calling our running comms object table, and then we're going to see some of the methods. So just so you guys understand really what methods are available to you, let's just call the help function, and you'll see here um, the one that we're going to be using is enumerate running. There's a get object method, is running, register, and revoke. And so these are just some different methods that we have access to if we want to use them. So for example, get a current object. That's pretty self-explanatory. This is going to return all of the running objects that we currently have open. And then this one is we're going to ask the question of, hey, is a particular object running currently at this moment? I haven't used the register or revoke one yet, so I'm not really clear on what those do, but I did provide a link to... Um, the documentation here so uh, it looks like revokes is revokes a previously registered object and then reg registers an object in the rot so if you use register it's going to register it in the object table and if you use revoke it's going to revoke a previously registered object so very useful okay so that's just getting some information about it but at this point we want to enumerate all of our running objects so what we're going to do is we're going to store it in a new variable and we're going to call it monikers and that's going to equal our running comms object and then we're going to call the enumerate running method and then so here <clears throat> what did i have as my notes oh creates an enumerator that can list all the monikers monikers in our table okay and then what we can do is we can loop through this enumerator. So we're going to loop through all the monikers. Now, you might be asking, what is a moniker? Well, I have a nice little definition that I found on Microsoft. Monikers are used as the basis for linking in COM. A linked object contains a moniker that identifies its source. When the user activates this linked object to edit it, the moniker is bound. This loads the link source into memory. So we can kind of think of it as a link or kind of a mechanism for us to link to a particular um, com object, at least high level, that's how we should think about it. And so when we get that, 
there's certain information that we can retrieve from that particular link saying what that particular moniker is and what it's linked to. So that's just for your guys' information if you're kind of going like, hey, what exactly is this all doing? And funny story, I don't know why, but when I first saw this word, I saw monkey ears. I don't know why, and I kept saying it for the longest time, and it's like, oh, it's monikers. But uh, yeah, funny story about that. I don't know why I did that. But anywho, so let's loop through it, and we're gonna say for moniker in monikers. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna uh, print out each one. And so there's a really easy way we can do this. First thing is I'm gonna put a line because we are gonna have a couple that are currently active. And then from here, um, we're gonna print the display name. So we need to get the display name of our particular moniker. So what we do is we call our moniker object, and then we're gonna call the get display name method. We're gonna pass through our context and then our moniker object that we want to get that display name for. And so that kind of goes back to here. That was what this line was doing. It was creating our variable, our context variable that we we're going to use inside our get display name. So this is a bind con. So basically, uh, it's a bind context that is an object that stores information about a particular moniker binding information, sorry, moniker binding operation. A bind context is a required parameter in many methods of the iMoniker interface and in certain functions related to monikers. So that's again, just some context for you as to what this particular object is. And so from here, what are we doing? Print the display name, and then we'll just do that first. Okay, so now we get a list of all the wonderful stuff that is currently running on my particular system. And so you can see things like Microsoft Visual Studios, I believe this is the ID for it, if I remember correctly, but don't take my word on it. Um, and then I believe this one was for Adobe Audition, if I remember. Um, so this is useful because with this piece of information, you can actually go and connect to that particular, um, what is it, com object using Win32Com. So this is a nice way for getting the information you need to connect to the com object inside of Win32. Now there are a couple pieces of information that I'm still gonna print out. So for example, there's something called, well, I'll just do this. So the first one is I'll just take our last one and show us what the properties and methods that we have access to. So one of them is bind to object, bind to storage. Um, I'm not gonna go on this one. Uh, get display name, we saw this one, hash. Uh, this is a 32-bit integer that it, that using the internal state of the moniker. So it calculates a 32-bit integer using its internal state. Um, and then is equal, so this is where you can take one moniker and compare it to another one and see if they're equal. And then this one is, is it a system moniker? So um, it, it basically returns an integer that gives the different type of moniker it is. And then I have on the actual one itself, some of the, the, uh, the constants and what they mean, just for your guys' reference. So anywho, we'll print the display name, and then what we'll also do is we'll, I don't know, we'll calculate the hash, I guess. So we'll print the, the hash, and so we'll take our moniker object, and then we'll call the hash method. So this would return the internal state. And then uh, we'll print uh, is system moniker. So with this one, it is the moniker, and then we're gonna do is system moniker. If I spelled that correctly, perfect. Oh, perfect. Okay, so again, different information. This one is getting the display name. So a more readable one. Unfortunately, sometimes the display name is not that useful. Um, we get the Visual Studios, so that's kind of useful. Um, where is it? Some other, some other objects as well. And then we get the, uh, what is it? Is, moniker, is system moniker, so this returns a constant and then I have what those values are here. And then we also calculate that hash. And so I'm going to insert a cell below and I'm just gonna show you 
what you can technically do with this. And so we'll import that and then we'll, I think it's Visual Studio. I can't remember. So we'll take our Win32COM library, we'll call our client module, and then we'll do da -da -da -dun, generate cache, and then we'll, we'll do ensure dispatch. And then we can pass through the value that is returned here. At least I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly. One of these I wasn't able to do, but then one I was. It worked, perfect. Visual Studios, yeah, and that's a kind of a good note here is some of these actually you can't pass through. It might not be registered. Well, let me correct myself. <laughs> it could be registered, but there's kind of this version discrepancy where if we're technically not on the right uh, bit version, then it's gonna act like it's not registered. So I still have to kind of work out the kinks for that one. And then when I come across a solution I feel comfortable sharing, I'm probably gonna do a video on that because it is important because there are certain libraries that you know, even though we might be on a 64-bit one, we should be able to go into the 32-bit one. And so you can see here that it returns back the Visual Studio environment. And then if you wanted to, we should be able to get all the information on this. So this is ways that if I wanted to, I can now go and interact with my Visual Studio's environment. And so I think there's one in here. What is it? Uh, Visual Studio... I think it's activate. I can't remember. I don't think that's the one. It doesn't have one that has activate. Yeah, there's one in here. Um, get project item template items, open project items, save as. Ah, I can't remember. There was one in here that I grabbed it and it worked perfectly and then it didn't open. Yeah, I don't know. But anywho, this again is just showing you that you can take the information up here and now leverage it inside the Win32 client, sorry, the Win32COM client library because now you have the information to go and dispatch that particular object. So that's kind of what was the purpose of this video was explaining what this object was and really defining the information that it's giving back to us and leveraging that in another library. So very useful. Um, especially if you're not sure what object you can technically work with. Uh, like, so for example, maybe this one, I think that's Adobe, I believe, I'm not positive. Um, we could also, oh, that's the iCloud Sync app. Get item, get app state, open. Yeah, so there's a lot of different objects that potentially we could be playing with here. So it's just kind of up to you about how you kind of want to go about it. Um, you know, interesting though, I'm kind of curious because I never really thought about this one, but it could be in alphabetical order. No, I don't know. Um, execute, get object. Oh, this seems to be, no, this is something different regardless. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of the whole essence of this particular video. Again, it was demonstrating the get running object table how to get information about your particular monikers, and then leveraging that information inside the win32com.client module. So if you have any questions about what we were kind of covering in this video, I kept it brief, uh, you know, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates. So thanks again for watching everybody. We will see you in the next video.